Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and the kingdom of them will of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and shall lead the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who has told the hearts of the faithful the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that the gift of the same Spirit of the truly wise ever reduce consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our family. Amen. Lord Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gift of Christmas. We celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you grant us abundant blessings and bring peace, love, and joy to prevail in our hearts, in our families, in the world. May you bless us during this program. That what we are going to share the word of God on Christmas may help each and every heart. Whoever listens or hears this, they may be blessed with the earth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us. Then our the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Christmas, brothers and sisters. Uh, this year we thank God that we had the period of Advent for four weeks preparing for Christmas. And uh, now Christmas has come. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. It's a celebration of the mystery of incarnation when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We celebrate our salvation so it's a moment of grace. It's a time to tap the blessings. So my uh, sharing today on Christmas, I will base it on, uh, on one aspect of Christmas, uh, which is the uh, spiritual gifts and fruits. Spiritual gifts and fruits, which we partake into which we receive because of Christmas. So I'll start with the uh, talking about the word, the letters that we comprise the word Christmas. That means the acronym Christmas. If we take Christmas a letter, each word letter by letter, you know, uh, usually uh, acronym means that each letter has a meaning. So this uh, which I'm going to say, it's not necessarily that it's absolute or it's the only way, the only words that can mean that, no. And you know, this is in English. And maybe if you're going to Kiswahili, it will be, you'll use another, other words. You go in Latin, Italian, it will use other words. Go in Hebrew, the same. So I'm using the English words. And doesn't mean that this is the only one possible way, no. This acronym can have it. So, Christmas with the last first letter C. C stands for creation. Creation. So we see that uh, in, the, in the letters when Paul says that everything was created in him and through him, and through him nothing existed. So creation would be there if Christ was not there. Because even in the, as we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 up to the end of chapter 1 to chapter 2, verse, verse 4a, it says that God created the world using the word. God created everything that is there, the light, the seas, using the word. He was just saying, let there be light, and there was light. Then in Genesis chapter 1, 20, he said, let us create human beings, man and woman in our own image. And likeness and male and female created them. So you see, use the word. So that word existed before time. But uh, when a point in time came, uh, came to us, the human flesh. So creation, uh, Christmas is, uh, we, we say, we will give thanks to God for creating us and creating everything that exists and knowing that we are created by God and we came from Him and come back to Him after being here on earth. Then we have the second letter, holiness. H. H stands for holiness. You know, as we say in the book, we read the book of letter to Hebrews, okay, without holiness you cannot see God. 
with that holiness, you cannot see God. Okay, and the, in the book of Leviticus, God says, Be holy for I am holy. In the letter of St. Peter, or of the Apostle Peter in the New Testament, they also quote the same, say, Be holy for I am holy. God says, Be holy for I am holy. So holiness is not an option. You can't say, I can be holy or not. If you are not striving for holiness, then you cannot see God. Because Jesus in teaching the Beatrice said that, Blessed are pure in spirit, for they shall see God. So we have to strive for that purity of mind, spirit, and body. So holiness is all the saints. What is the main the main uh, quality of saints? They say quality of saints is is holiness. That's why we call them holy. The word for a saint in Swahili is mutakatif, and the same word mutakatif means holy. When you sing the song to say holy, 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 holy. The the third letter in the word Christmas is R, Revelation. So Revelation. Uh, you, when you, uh, Revelation, you see, everything has been revealed to us. It's God who took the initiative to reveal to us the, what was hidden in the mysteries. Okay, what was the mystery and hidden was revealed to us at a point in time. So otherwise, we wouldn't have known, we wouldn't have known that Christ is our, is our Savior if it had not been revealed to us. So I, I will just um, mention that if you look at uh, the letter of St. Paul to Romans, okay, chapter 16, chapter 16, verse 25 to 27, and I will just read a uh, part of it, okay. And now to him who can, who can make strong you strong in accordance with, the, with the, the gospel that I preach and the proclamation of Jesus Christ in accordance with the, that mystery which for endless ages was kept secret but now okay, is revealed as in the prophetic writings at the eternal command as, as the eternal God commanded, okay, it has been revealed to us. So the prophets, they prophesied, they foretold. But when the fulfillment of time came, then it was revealed to us. So Jesus Christ is the revelation of God, is the fulfillment of law and prophets. Uh, and therefore, uh, there's nothing revealed to us for salvation that has not come through Christ. Then the next letter is uh, I, incarnation, 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 the etymology of the word incarnation is uh, from the, the word carne, the word carne, in carne, carne means uh, flesh, okay, in fact even in Italian carne would mean meat also, so carne means flesh, so incarnation means the word became flesh, okay. God became human, God man. In John chapter 1, verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. These are the words that we pray every day when we say the angelus. Okay? That the word which existed before time in eternity. We say, as you see in the second book of Samuel, you hear David. Um, leaping and jumping with joy, singing and dancing before the ark of God. Then he, we come, we move forward and come to uh, Luke chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 39, 56. We find that he, he John the Baptist in the mother's womb, when Elizabeth, when Mother Mary, Mary visited Elizabeth and preached Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and John the Baptist, the baby in the Elizabeth's womb, was leaping for joy. Leaping for joy, like David before the ark. And because John the Baptist was leaping before Jesus Christ, which is the ark, before Mary, who is the ark of God, the ark of the covenant. Because Mary, Mary's womb became the sanctuary of God, the dwelling place of the Most High. Then, he, so Jesus, in the, we say Jesus, the womb of Mary, was, was leaping from eternity into time. Leaping from eternity into time. Eternity, there's no measure of time. Okay? But he, the, in time, in here, we exist within time. 
So Jesus was sleeping from eternity to time in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Luke 1, uh, 39 to 45. So incarnation is very important because this is the basis of our, our, our salvation. So St. Francis of Assisi was touched very much by the humility of the Son of God. For having left his majesty in heaven, eternity, and coming, leaping into time to come to us through the womb of the Virgin Mary. And that's why St. Francis went ahead on the Christmas vigil, okay, made a crib, okay, made the Christmas crib, the first Christmas crib in the 12th, 1223 AD. This year we're celebrating 800 years since the beginning of the, uh, the Christmas crib. Which, so St. Francis while was preaching that, that uh, Christmas vigil. The child Jesus appeared in that crib. He came alive. Okay, and since then there has been, we have the tradition or custom of making Christmas crib in our, in our churches during Christmas. So that is the mystery of incarnation. But you see, being a mystery and difficult to explain in concrete words, it is concretized and becomes practical in Christmas, in the birth of Jesus. The, the next letter in Christmas is S. Okay? C-H-R-I-S. S stands for salvation. Okay? So, when, when, when God uh, saw the fall of man, in the Garden of Eden, okay, when our first parents fell in Genesis chapter 3, I mean sinned, God out of mercy and compassion promised the Messiah, the Savior. In Genesis 3.15 he said, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and your offspring. The offspring of the woman, now that evil was on the side of the evil one, she had failed, the, the woman that God was talking about is the new Eve with the virgin Mary, and her offspring is Jesus Christ who by his sacrifice on the cross ended the, uh, 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 defeated Satan, evil, death, anything that's sinful. And so salvation is necessary because it's necessary uh, and Jesus came to save us. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he said his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. So, and we have a number of uh, verses that talk about salvation, that Jesus came to save us, which we may not go into the them all. But remember, even during the announcement of the birth of Jesus, okay, the, the angel said the child to be born will be saved, will, will, will be the Savior, will save the world, will save people from their sins. So, Jesus is the salvation. The next letter in the Christmas is T, Theotokos. T is just the Theotokos. Theotokos means the mother of God, the Virgin Mary. Theo in Greek means God, and Tokos would be mean the, 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 the mother of God. Okay? You remember the Council of uh, Ephesus when you look, when you look at the church history, okay? which is defined the dogma of, uh, of Mary, Theotokos, the mother of God. Mary was the mother of God right from the beginning because God planned that and intended. And God's plans are eternal. So uh, when we come to learn that Mary is the mother of God, it doesn't mean that it starts being at that time. Or if you learn this year that Mary is the mother of God, you come to be convinced and have faith that Mary is the mother of God. It doesn't mean that Mary starts being the mother of God now. No. She has always been the mother of God, but it's you who it has come to realization uh, to, that it is so. So why do we say that Mary is the mother of God? Because the scripture says in Luke chapter 1 verse 43, okay, Luke uh, chapter 1 verse 43, I beg to read, because this is very important. We celebrate Christmas and we want to be uh, sure about this and convinced. Luke 1 for 3 says, 
and Elizabeth cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? You see, the Lord Curious, the word Lord is only a son for God. And, uh, and Elizabeth, being filled with the Holy Spirit, okay, during a marriage visitation, it was no longer Elizabeth speaking, but it was the Holy Spirit speaking in her. And the Holy Spirit declared that Mary is a mother of the Lord. And in, uh, again, in the same Luke chapter 1, verse 35, it says, uh, The angel. The angel was a messenger from God the Father and was delivering the message to Mary. The subject matter is the, is the Son, Jesus Christ. Okay? And the, the Holy Spirit is the medium, is the one by the agent by whose Mary conceived Jesus. So the angel said uh, the words given, sent to him by God from heaven. He told Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and power and most highly shadow you. And him whom you consume will be called Holy Son of God. Okay. So, uh, he, Holy Spirit come upon you, the promise will overshadow you, and him will be, will be, whom you will consume will be called Holy Son of God. So, Mary conceived the Son of God in her womb. Okay. Jesus is God from God. It's a manifestation of the Father. He says, says Whoever has seen the Father has seen me. Okay. So, uh, Mary. Uh, bearing Jesus in her womb, the Son of God, okay, becomes straight away the Mother of God. That's has been through to us in the, in, the, in, the, in the sacred scripture. Again, in uh, Matthew 1.23, Joseph was told by the angel of God that uh, the child Mary would give birth to by the Holy Spirit. You would name him Jesus because he's the seventh word. Jesus uh, is the Emmanuel. It's God with us. Emmanuel God with us. So, and Jesus, the mother of this man, the one who considers him man, God with us. So, how would God come in our, in our midst in other way than the way he chose to? Okay, that was God's own initiative. Then also in the Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, When the appointed time came, God sent the son born of a woman, subject to the Lord to live as caps of the law. So, which is that appointed time? It's Christmas, when Mary gave birth to the same. So it was prophesied, it was foretold, but there came the time of fulfillment. And Mary gave birth to uh, Savior. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Then uh, the next uh, letter is M, in the according of Christmas. M stands for mercy. Okay, mercy. M E R C Y. Mercy is a uh, two way. There is mercy from God. We will experience the mercy of God. God saved us by His mercy. God, when God forgives us, it's an act of mercy, okay? Then on the other side of the coin, Jesus told us to be merciful to others as our Heavenly Father is merciful to us. He said, be merciful as your Heavenly Father, or be compassionate as your Heavenly Father is compassionate. Who brings rain to the, to the, to the, to the good and the bad. And Jesus, in his uh, teaching, emphasized on forgiving others, forgiving enemies. So all the, the, the seven corporal works of mercy and the seven spiritual works of mercy are embodied in this word mercy in Christmas. So during Christmas, until when we celebrate Christmas, birthday, we need to experience the mercy of God. We need to repent of our sins, to receive forgiveness from God. Then also, we have a responsibility to forgive others. If you do not forgive people who have hurt you, your enemies, your family members who have hurt you, who have offended you, if you do not forgive them, then you won't be celebrating Christmas the way Jesus intended. Because in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, Jesus says, uh, just as uh, uh, it's better I read, Matthew 6, verse 14 to 15, uh, Jesus says, if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your transgressions. So we have obligation to forgive others so that we can be tap all the blessings of Christmas. Remember Jesus, just by taking flesh to be born 
in our midst. He accepted to take upon himself our burden, our sin, our shame. Okay? Uh, and he came into, uh, into our lives as human beings to redeem us. So we have also obligation to forgive others. So during Christmas, in case you have not forgiven anyone, please forgive them. And it is not easy to release forgiveness, but it's necessary. Pray for the grace. Then you also, so one of the seven spiritual works of mercy is to forgive. Okay, the other spiritual works of mercy are uh, uh, counseling the doubtful, instructing the ignorant, admonishing sinners. Okay, we say the releasing forgiveness. Okay, uh, gentleness. Okay, praying. Okay, uh, for the living and the dead. Okay, and gentleness. Okay. So there are seven spiritual works of mass, and there are seven corporal works of mass, which includes uh, giving water to the thirsty, food to the hungry, okay, clothe the naked, or uh, shelter home to the homeless, visiting the sick, visiting prisoners, and burying the dead. So there are seven corporal works of mass. So that's why it's very good that when you celebrate Christmas, remember, I think during this Christmas season, visit the poor. Give some food to the poor. Don't waste food when there are many people suffering, starving. Okay? Visit the refugees. There are refugees in our midst. Migrants. Uh, prisoners. Sick people. Okay? Visit the children in the orphanages who have no one to call father or mother. Be go there. Visit them. They have someone to call mother and father to embrace them. Then the next uh, acronym, the word for, for Christmas, A, A stands for adoration. Okay, adoration. Adoration also, some to word which is to, uh, in the church of believe adoration, the synonym is the word worship. Okay, worship. You remember when the, the Magi, the, the, the queens from the east, the three kings from the east, when they came to visit the child Jesus, okay, they said, we have come to worship him, we have come to adore him. And I read in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 to, verse 10 to 12, okay, when the, the wise men saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with, them, with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him and opened their treasures. They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and man. Okay? You see, they, they, when they came, they found the child with the mother in the manger, in the cow shed. They fall down. They worshipped him. They adored him. And in fact, when they, they, they were inquiring about where the king of Jesus is born, they said, we have come to worship him. We have come to adore him. So Christmas is about adoration. This is the time when he it's a wonderful moment to encounter the Lord in praise and worship, in prayer, when you're praying the rosary, okay? You see, when you're praying, the best thing to do uh, during Christmas, a uh, devotion, is the rosary. Don't leave out the rosary. Pray the rosary. If you, have, if you are struggling with the praying the rosary, Ephesians 1, do one today on Christmas, you'll see, during this Christmas season, okay? You see the mysteries of Christmas, the Annunciation, the first joy from the Annunciation, for the birth of Jesus, visitation of Mary, birth of Jesus, the third joyful mystery of the rosary is Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. The fourth the presentation of Jesus in the temple when he was 40 days old. Uh, the, the fifth is fighting with Jesus in the temple when he was 20 years old. So it's wonderful to, to meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. Okay, attack the blessings. It's a, Christmas is just a wonderful moment. Then I come to uh, the last one, the letter S in the acronym Christmas. Letter S, I said, stands for spiritual gifts and fruits. So uh, I will uh, uh, say that I focus on that a bit and then before I conclude. Spiritual gifts and fruits. Now, what is the basis of saying that Christmas is a uh, moment of grace for uh, receiving the gifts? of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and also uh, sharing these gifts, using these gifts to, for the greater glory of God to build the body of Christ. Okay. In uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, verse 1 to 3, and these are the readings we hear very much 
during a uh, time of Christmas or preparation for Christmas. It's written, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with the justice, and decide fairly for the lands afflicted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see. It says that it, uh, the coming of the Messiah, Christ Jesus, God in our ministry, the Spirit of the Lord is resting upon him. Okay? He has the spirit of wisdom knowledge, understanding, fear of the Lord. And these are the, what we find in the seven sanctifying gifts of the Holy Spirit, which you, uh, in the Holy Sacrament of Baptism, we receive the seven sanctifying gifts of the Holy Spirit. These gifts are necessary for us to live the Christian life because they strengthen us. They give us power and authority to witness to the truth, to Christ even in the moment of suffering, of storms, of sicknesses, whatever it is. So, don't take these gifts, these seven sanctified gifts for granted. These, these gifts, these seven sanctified gifts are understanding, cancer, piety, fortitude, fear of the Lord, wisdom and knowledge. Okay? These are the seven gifts we see in the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation. And we hear that, that Christ, the child has been born to us as his soul. During Christmas, a time to renew the grace of baptism that you received, to the gift that you received the Holy Spirit, make use of them to build the body of Christ to, 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 for others also to be blessed. Then I will read also from uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, which says, The Lord His dominion is vast and forever peaceful upon David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains. By judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Lord has sent a word against Jacob, and it falls, or, or, it falls upon Israel. His dominion is vast and and forever peaceful. Okay. In, a, um, a, in a, the same chapter, I said chapter nine, verse five. Okay. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. Upon his shoulder, dominion or government rests. The the name his name is Wonder Counselor, God Hero. Father forever, Prince of Peace. Okay. Wonderful Counselor. Okay. Mighty God or God Hero. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the child Jesus at Christmas. Then uh, lastly, uh, I read Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, to release prisoners, and to announce the favor, the year of the Lord, the day of vindication by our God, to comfort the mournful. So Jesus, Jesus who is born in our midst, has the fullness of the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news to the poor, to release captives, to heal the sick. Okay. To liberate captives, forgive sins, and everything to do that. So, dear brothers and sisters, during this Christmas, uh, uh, make use, pray for the gifts of God, receive the gifts of God, speak abundance, make use of them. Then, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, of course, they go in hand in hand, but it's necessary to have the fruits because they are fruits of the Holy Spirit that will lead us to heaven. Okay? 
the fruits of the Holy Spirit are very important because this is what will lead us to heaven. So, and we are familiar with them from Galatians chapter 5. Okay, and it was in uh, 19 to 1. We have the fruits of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self control, okay, modesty, um, uh, chastity, okay, and uh, faithfulness. The, this, the gift of the Holy Spirit are meant to. Uh, we need to bear this, every Christian. Because as Jesus said, for example, when you take the gift of love, it says that even if we are able to do miracles and perform many things, but without love, all that is nothing. It's like an empty tea making noise. So, and St. Paul tells in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that the, uh, there are three that things that will last, will remain, will, will remain with us forever. That is faith, hope, and love. Another word for love is charity. And see, the greatest of this is love. So, uh, during uh, Christmas, my dear brothers, uh, bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That is, uh, it will, it's good for the community, for others. When you have love for others, you are not thinking of evil for them. You shall wish them well. Okay? Then, you, that's why when we have to, when we send a message to people, even the cards that we see, we send the gifts, we write peace, uh, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, peace, joy, and love. Okay, peace, joy, love, kindness, and so on. Those are fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we'll be blessed with that. Now, we, Mother Mary has the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit in abundance, totality. Because herself became the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are temples of the Holy Spirit by the right of baptism. So imagine Mary, who was immaculate, without sin, pure, be, be also temple of the Holy Spirit. Then she's to a high degree because for her, I did like this position, total surrender to the will of God. So let us follow her example and make use of the gifts. When Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit, she went to, uh, she went to visit Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1, 39 45. And greeting Elizabeth, uh, the child in the womb even also left for joy. So we can also be like Mary. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we shall be able to share with others. Because we can't give what we don't have. Let us try for this. So my dear brothers and sisters, enjoy Christmas. Uh, do works of mercy, uh, bless others, you will be blessed and pray always. Don't miss out to pray on Christmas Day and during Christmas season. Because we should all just need to be connected to the Lord. When we, uh, we share, whatever we need to have, the food, uh, cakes, uh, gifts, uh, share. And, and also remember mostly those who have nothing. Uh, there is a family, there are some families now they were preparing for Christmas, but something has happened. Some have lost their love and their money. There are others, a, a couple was preparing very good for Christmas. Uh, a, a, a wife has discovered a husband has been cheated on her. And now she's filled with a lot of bitterness, anger, resentment. And it's like, yes, my Christmas has been spoiled. These people, they need to our prayers. They need our assistance. Okay, anybody whose spouse has been cheating on them and they can't be discovered now, you see. Some others have received the results for the examinations of students, pupils, and they're not happy with their results and they're sad. Okay? Experience, help them to experience the joy of Christmas because the, the, uh, the coming of Christ is more important than anything else in the world. And as Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all shall be added unto you, shall be given unto you. So Christmas is a wonderful moment that we do not miss out on that. For healing, for deliverance, for healing of family trees. You remember in Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 to 17, Jesus, the, the genealogy of Jesus, you find the people, kings, prophets, uh, uh, Israelites there, even foreigners, you find that people who committed the sins of murder, adultery, uh, idolatry, adoring other and sin, sin. But out of it you find when it comes to Mary, she's like she's a rose flower growing within the, from the thorns. Mary is immaculate and of Mary was born Jesus Christ, who is uh, the Son of God, eternal God. So dear brothers and sisters, 
be blessed during Christmas. So let us pray. Uh, believe that the blessings of Christmas are in abundance. So whatever situation you are going through, okay, it may be sickness, maybe you are worried about, anxious about something, maybe you don't have inner peace, you are psychologically disturbed, you are worried about the future, you are weighed down with the debts, okay, or you, you, you are expecting to receive some money after you have received, they have told you you will receive next week or next month, and now you find that you cannot celebrate as well. So in whatever situation, just surrender to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus now as we are praying. Lord Jesus Christ, come to our situation, come to everyone who is listening. When they have heard your word and they cannot go back hungry. When you had pity, compassion on the multitude, you said they have been with me uh, for these days, so they cannot go back hungry. Give them food. And you did a perfect miracle of multiplication of loves. Let your people who have heard your word about Christmas not go back empty. Fill them, Lord. Grant them healing of mind, spirit, and body. Heal those who are suffering from cancer, diabetes, uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, any type of diseases, kidney failure, uh, uh, any types of, of cancer, ovarian system, uterine uh, cancer, cancer of the blood, prostate cancer, any condition of the skin and any physical illnesses receive healing in the name of Jesus by the blessings that come with the Christmas, the birth of our Savior. For those suffering from psychological illnesses, sometimes you go to hospital, they test you, they are saying, seeing nothing, but you are not at peace. Receive healing as well of all types of sicknesses, healing of memories, past painful memories, receive healing, emotional wounds, receive healing, spiritual wounds, receive healing. And those also who are possessed by demons, evil spirits, be delivered now in the name of Jesus. We cast away all the evil powers, all the demons, all the Lucifer, the hierarchy, and all the people, and the, their agents, out of the name of Jesus, who command to go the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now we pray, seek blessings upon our families, upon our parents, upon pregnant mothers, whom the Lord has chosen to bear. A human life from moment of conception. May we bless all the pregnant mothers who they are. We pray for those children, the mothers whom, especially those in danger of abortion, they may not be aborted but allowed to live. Just as Mary accepted Jesus and carried Jesus for nine months and gave birth to the Savior. May you, Lord, help us to respect and uphold the dignity, sanctity of human life from moment of conception to natural end. We pray for children in our families. The Lord bless them. The youth, and especially the youth who are lost in drugs, in addictions, pornography, lust, uh, drug addiction, alcohol. Deliver them now during this blessings of Christmas. May they receive experience and deliverance and from, and from those bondages and addictions. Now in the name of Jesus. Mother Mary will commend to you all our petitions and intercede for us. Say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at our hour death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Amen.